Hello and welcome to this week's episode where I'm joined by Spencer Howard, the founder of Straight to the Points. Spencer's mission is to help elevate your travel experience through their premium cabin flight alerts newsletter and by assisting you with your travel needs and bookings. I know much of my audience is US based, so I'm super keen for Spencer to help you out. I'm also keen to hear if Spencer can help other people in countries like UK, Canada and Australia, etc. And alongside this, I want to know the traveller in Spencer too. So Spencer, welcome to the show. How are you doing? Thanks so much for having me, James. Great to be here. Yeah, thanks for coming on. Really appreciate it. Where are you based right now? Uh, well, I live in Washington, D.C., but I'm currently visiting family in uh, Kentucky. Okay, so my first question is going to be growing up. Is that where you're from, Kentucky originally? I am. I'm from Lexington. I guess technically I was born in Hartford, Connecticut, but Kentucky is where I'm from. It's where my mom's from. So, yeah. Can you tell maybe my European listeners what Kentucky, apart from the chicken, Kentucky is known <laughs> for? <laughs> I would say bourbon, college basketball, and horse racing. And That's a big thing. Are they your things you're into or not really into that? At bourbon, all? absolutely. Yeah. All things whiskey, really. Yeah. And I mean, growing up, I think you're, if you, grew up in Lexington, Kentucky, you're, you are a University of Kentucky basketball fan. So that's just a, it's a big thing. I know college sports is not always a big thing around the world, but in the US. It's huge, huge. isn't it? Huge. Uh, it's, it's kind of a religion. I mean, I always, the memories I have as a child are before cell phones. That's yep. aging myself here, but you could, if there was a, a basketball game that day and you weren't watching it for some reason, you were just downtown near the arena you could see people come out of it and know if you'd want, we'd won or lost just immediately. Just see somebody's face. You would just know. Like it's, that's how wrapped up in it people would get. So yeah, it's kind of fun though. Okay. I think just to finish on college sports, I think the crazy thing I saw was the Lakers were looking for a coach. Like, you <laughs> must know about this. And they went for the guy who's won two in a row or something at college level and he, he turned him down. But then I saw his salary. I'm like, oh yeah, he doesn't need to move because he gets yeah. paid millions anyway. <laughs> He's is- doing all right. That's baffling from, from a European. That is that's baffling. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I think I think it's a bit the passion is a bit like football, like Premier League or Championship in the yeah. UK. Um, having been to ma- a match there, like it's there's a similar kind of passion because it's still somewhat localized rather than just like we pick a player from from somewhere else and they come in. It's, I don't know. It's just it's very it's all about the fans. I think and that's it's a similar aspect to it. Um yeah, even Premier League is still localized, believe it or not. I know, I know yeah. some clubs are huge and they get a worldwide audience, but yeah, my team's in the Premier League, Ipswich Town, and it's still localized. Right? Yeah, big so, year for you. First first year in a while. Yeah, over 20 years. Yeah, huge. Yeah, And I remember when yeah. we were there last time, so that shows my age. <laughs> it, it hurt me a little as a Leeds fan, since I was really hoping that we oh. would make it back up again. But, you know, that's okay. You, you were <laughs> super unlucky because 90 points normally gets you up. And you just had one of those years. You ran someone like us. I, th- yeah. I think it was the same number of points we had in the championship when we got promoted the last time. Yep. And I was like, oh, cool. But That's you should do right. well this season. Okay. You should be fine. Yeah. I think Hopefully. you got it. Yeah. For Kentucky, if you're going to go travel, what are the options? Get in a car. Uh, yeah. I mean, we have an airport, but it's uh, it's small. So a lot of my travel growing up was road trips. Also, I played baseball into university. So m- much of my summer off of school was playing in baseball tournaments. Uh, okay. I got very accustomed to sleeping on a bus. I think the <laughs> longest trip we took was from Lexington to Wichita, Kansas, which is like, I think it was a 14 hour bus ride. I just remember waking up, looking out the window and I couldn't see anything but a field. There were like no signs, no <laughs> how, no buildings. And I was just, I remember thinking like, where the hell am I? And just went back to sleep. But yeah, a lot of trips kind of driving around the southeast of the U.S. to the east coast and then bus trips for tournaments and stuff like that. That's uh, yeah, that's what I did growing up. Yeah, that's interesting because you said that about fields and no signs and whatever. If you spoke to someone in the UK and you think uh, your U.S. road trip, what do you think of? It's probably that just roads going on forever. Not yeah. much in between apart from the big cities, right? So that's kind of sure. what I would think America was when I was younger, I reckon. Yeah. And I think it, it depends where you are. Like living in DC now, you quickly get, if you go up the East coast, you quickly get to Baltimore. You're going to get, you can get to Philly, you go up to New York, uh, you get to Boston, not too far from that. I mean, it's just, it's more compact on the East coast. You get out mm. West and everything feels so much bigger and spread out. Yeah. it's awesome. And for any flights, where would you, where can you go from Kentucky? If you're based there, is it international airport yeah. or is it not no. to destinations? Lexington. I can get to DC. Actually, there's one nonstop flight out of Lexington. Okay. Love that. Yeah. Of course, it leaves at six in the morning. So of course, <laughs> you've really got to want it. But yeah, you can. You can. I think you get to Chicago, and I don't know. They 
maybe New York still. Um, a lot of times you have, you just have to connect. You can fly to it, a Delta to Atlanta and connect somewhere else. You can fly Delta to Detroit and connect somewhere else, stuff like that. But you know, you can get a decent number of places. It's just, it's not like living in New York where you can get anywhere in the world. I just assumed every state had an international airport. I think, well, so the Cincinnati airport, it's known as Cincinnati. It's actually in Covington, Kentucky. Right. They have a, I think there's a British Airways flight to London, Air France flight to Paris. It used to be bigger. It's not as big anymore. And Louisville's airport, we say Louisville, not Louisville. But just put marbles in your mouth and try to say it and then you'll say it right. <laughs> um, but I don't know if they have international flights at this point. But yeah. Okay. And was there any trip when you're younger that maybe fueled a bit of interest in travel uh, going into adulthood? Yeah, I think I'm a little different than a lot of people. So my dad traveled for work growing up, just flying to different places for for work. And my interest in travel stemmed from like really liking airplanes. I just thought they were really fascinating. And my mom said I always loved the airport. So we'd go pick my dad up from from trips uh, and aging myself back in the day when you could go to the gate and like greet people as they got off the plane <laughs> uh, in the early 90s. But that was, I don't know, I think I was obsessed with planes. Once I was in the working world, uh, I traveled a bit for work and that just kind of like expanded it more so. Um, yeah. Okay. And was there like a first international flight or international trip where you thought, oh, do you know what? This is completely different to what I'm used to or even yeah. a bit of culture shock. Um, I wouldn't say culture shock. I'm trying to think. So I went to the Cayman Islands with my parents once and I was just a brat about it. I was 14 and I missed baseball, a baseball game. And I was really upset <laughs> about it, which is like, talk about ungrateful. Uh, I did not travel a lot internationally until... I guess 2016, that's really where it started. I mean, this is, I mean, I guess I graduated from university in 2009. So it was, it was a oh, while. Yeah. Oh, I mean, wow, I just yeah. worked a lot. So I was working a lot, working in politics. And so I didn't have a lot of time to, you know, explore. It was only towards the end of my time in politics where I had a job at the U.S. Travel Association in a political capacity, but they actually wanted us to get out there and travel. And that was the first time I'd been around that. And so I just started booking anything to anywhere. <laughs> and I was just like, I'm just going to go. I think within the span of like a few weeks, I'd booked a flight to Milan just because it was a cheap flight. I booked flights to Amsterdam with a side trip to Vienna. And then I booked like a three-day trip to Taiwan. It took me 24 hours to get there and 24 hours back. Somehow I convinced a good friend to go with me. Yeah, it was uh, it was kind of being like being shot out of a cannon once I was able to travel. Yeah, so that's very interesting because I think you had a, I have an interest in planes as well, weirdly enough, right? So I was in air cadets when I was younger. So, you know, I was flying in little two-seater planes from the age of yeah. like 13 or something. So I had a fascination. I was going to join the Air Force and, and didn't really went into music. But I had an interest in planes, but not really seeing many places. It's an interesting concept. Maybe you was more interested in the technicality of flying rather yeah. than actually I mean, fair. Fine too, somewhere. Right? They're pretty amazing. Yeah. Um, yeah I yeah. mean, well, I mean, one thing that really sticks out for me is, I mean, this is probably 2013, 14. I was working just in a position where I did travel some. And mm -hmm. I just remember connecting in Detroit and I was talking to my dad. It was just kind of fun for me because it was just like, you know, talking to somebody who had traveled millions of miles around the mm. world doing the same thing he had been doing. And I just remember I was like on one of those uh, moving walkways and I go by this Korean air flight and I go by this Virgin Atlantic flight. And I remember just thinking as I'm like kind of rolling by, just being like, man, I wonder what, wonder what people are going to do. Like, yeah, and it just, yeah. I just really was fascinated by like, oh, you could just get on a plane and then, you know, eight hours later be, or 10 hours later, be com somewhere completely different. And I just, I think it was around that time where I just kept thinking about that more and more. And it was just like a job later that I had the opportunity to travel. Um, and now I still see planes the same way. <laughs> I still get really excited to be at the airport. Uh, and yeah, I think there's just so much possibility. Um, yeah, the options, right? So yeah. at that point, even though you maybe not flying too much around, was there countries in your mind that you just had in the back? Like, do you know what? If I do get a chance to go, was there some two or three countries first on your, on your list? I feel like there should have been, but it was very much just, and, and this still like holds true for me today where it's just like, let the deal find you. Like, okay. I yeah. want to see so many things. Like if I see one first and one next or one much later, like it doesn't really matter to me. Like I'm just, I want to go see things. Yeah. Uh, and so if, you know, if I sit, I tell this to people, it's like, yeah, you want to go to Paris, but like, 
did you also want to go to Japan? There's a deal to Japan. Like, oh yeah, I also want to go to Japan. Great. Go to Japan this time and go to Paris next time. Like the order doesn't generally matter. I mean, I'm, there are certainly things where it's like you wanted to go to the Paris Olympics. Okay. That's, that was this year. You had to do it this time. Yeah. Yeah. But broadly speaking, if it's just like, I want to go experience the culture and try the food and what it like, it doesn't matter. (laughs) Just go. So, (laughs) so to me, it was just, I, I've never really, I mean, yes, I've booked trips intentionally, but it's generally when I'm traveling with my wife versus if I'm booking a trip with a friend, it's more like me sending up my friend, Tim, a message and going, Hey, have you ever been to Lithuania? And he's just like, <laughs> and he's usually texting me back going, no. And I'm like, want to go? <laughs> <That's> like, <laughs> which was sometimes gets followed by, I'm not going to Lithuania. And then like four hours later, he's like, so I booked the flight. It's, you know, that's just, uh, I think there's just been a lot of that for the last eight years. <laughs> just kind of like, this looks like it could be interesting. I think that sums up this podcast, Sufa. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> totally, totally winging it, right? So, absolutely yeah. winging it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Have you heard of the um, surprise travel trend this year? Where I, people, I have seen that. Yeah, people get on Skyscanner, for example, or Google Flights, put where yeah. they're from, and then just put in everywhere, and they just go to the cheapest place. I haven't done that yet, but I'd love to just see what comes up and commit to it. That'd be pretty cool, right? It's. I think there's something fun about spontaneous. So I think the yeah. latest I've booked a flight is six hours before departure. I had just come home from like a two-week trip to Southeast Asia, and I was already just like antsy to go somewhere. And my wife was busy with work and she was like, just go get out of my hair. <laughs> and a friend of mine was in Amsterdam. So I was like, I'm going to Amsterdam. So Dragged cool. another friend with me. Love <laughs> so that. It was just, yeah, I don't know. That's just, that's just the way I've been doing it. And, you know, do as I have a child now, so it's harder, but yeah, but it's just when the opportunities there go. That's kind of key to my last question, really, which you can bear in mind for a minute, I sort of asked why people should travel, right? So you can think about that for the last question. Yeah. Um, before we get straight into the points, just a couple more questions. Career-wise, what were you up to? Yeah. So like I mentioned, I was working in politics and I did that. Well, I started doing that while I was in university and did yeah. that for, I guess, including that time, probably about 10 years and yeah. started writing about points and travel part-time 2016 and within about six months, made it my full-time, full-time life, wow. freelance yeah. writing, and eventually started my own, turned my hobby side of this into a, a business in January of 2021. So yeah, oh, not bad. Here yeah. we are. <laughs> and politics, politics sounds, I'm not gonna get into politics, but it sounds quite an yeah. intense, intense career, potentially. Yeah, it is. It's uh, you like competition and I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's competitive. Uh, (laughs) It's it's so funny because like now every time I talk, people are like, oh, what'd you used to do? And I was like, well, probably something you don't want to talk about. Uh, (laughs) It's like, I think it's interesting, but I might be one of the only people who does. So yeah, it's, uh, but it's a good, it was a good time, but I I just, I don't know. I I had the opportunity to do something new and it just, I was, I could feel myself becoming obsessed with travel and Mm -hmm. I knew that it was just like, it was all I was thinking about. And so when I had the, had enough writing lined up, I was like, you know what? I'm just, I'm, I'm going to do this. I got to choose one or the other. <laughs> so. Yeah. Um, okay. That's quite cool. You started late as well. I think the, the sort of motivation is there quite intensely, right? Because if you travel yeah, early doors, there's, there's no right or wrong way, but like you might be eager to catch up and go and see a lot of places, right? Yeah. I think, I mean, there's definitely a part of you that's like, man, what was I doing? I could have been doing this. Sure. Yeah. That's but you know, I had great, I had great experiences along the way. I've met great people. I still have friends from my time in politics. Like I don't regret any of it. It's yeah. just, that was, I look at it as almost like chapters. Yeah, of um, course. Yeah. yeah chapters I, of like life. I played, yeah. played baseball from the time I was five until, I don't know, very beginning of my twenties and then like got hurt playing baseball went straight into working in politics, did that for 10 years. Now I've been doing this for eight years. So it's just like, it's just these large chapters, but chapters nonetheless. Maybe they're each books. I don't know. But it's, but I think that's, I don't know. It's great. I've really enjoyed having the different experiences along the way. How did you get into points then? Where did that come into? Because obviously there's one thing saying you want to go and travel. But how did you get into points specifically? That's a, it's a great question. My, my, like I mentioned, my last job in politics was the U.S. Travel Association, and we would get press clips each day, yeah. just kind of what's going on on the issues that we're working on. And one of them, there was a topic we were working on called Open Skies Agreements. 
I won't bore you with the details. Broadly speaking, free trade agreements between countries to allow airlines to go back and forth between countries, um, right. just making it easier easier for them to do so. So there was a blogger who wrote an article commenting on it. And I remember my initial reaction was like, why the hell do I care about what some blogger has to say? I'm used to reading like the Wall Street Journal's aviation reporter. Yeah. And I was like, why do I care about what this blogger saying? And his name's Gary from <laughs> Gary Left from View from the Wing. I now know Gary is a super nice guy. But <laughs> it was, when I first saw it, I was like, I don't know who you are. And I was poking around in a site and I was like, points, you use points to book this like business class flight. Okay. I could get into that. I'm I'm 6'3". I'm a tall guy. I would like space. Business class sounds like a great way to go travel around the world. And that was, I became obsessed, roughly speaking. I mean, okay. I spent about four hours a night for like six months reading every credit card rule, every airline routing rule. I mean, I wanted to like, I wanted to figure out everything about everything <laughs> and then see if I could like break the rules. But that was, yeah, that was my kind of very fast introduction. It was just as soon as I found it, I just went full speed. And it's been fun ever since. Interestingly, I met some people at TravelCon this year, which is another event I went to. And a yeah. lot of them go to FinCon. I don't know if you go to FinCon yeah. or not. And I had a few people explain it to me as well. And I kind of did get the concept. Uh, but some people are really organized with this sort of stuff. So we're going to go into straight to the points because I'm keen to maybe compare what they said to what you, you will say as well. So can you tell us a bit about straight to the points, what the aim is and describe in your own words, how sure. that can help people travel? But cheaper. So I like that you mentioned cheaper. So I always like to say in points, you have people who get into it for different reasons. Some it's just like travel, but don't spend money. I was yeah. slightly different. I was traveling and, and enhance the experience. Yeah. And so That's I why. think there's, there's, and, and to me, it's just like, I don't care why you want to travel. I'm just glad you're traveling. Like I don't play this game of like, oh, you should fly economy or you should fly. I'm like, I don't care. Fly business, fly economy, whatever makes you happy, just go. For me, I like flying business and first class on long flights across the world. And it's tougher to do that with points than it is to fly economy. So I became obsessed with trying to find all of this like award space that you could use your points on. And that was the kind of driver for starting the straight to the points award alerts newsletter. When my friends were like, oh, can you just share that? Like just whatever <laughs> you find, just share it, just put an email, send it to me. So I started to just send out a newsletter back in like August of 2018. Didn't know what I was doing, but I was like, I'll just share what I'm finding. And it just grew faster than I expected by... Yeah. And I'm, I'm, it's evolved a little bit, but it's mostly the same concept still, which is just like show people how to use their points in an efficient manner to book seats up in the front of the plane. And I focus on like two plus seats so that like couples and families can mm -hmm. travel together. And that's also where it's harder to find space. It's one seat. You can do it. It's not, it's not always easy, but it's not terribly hard when you start getting multiple seats. That's where the challenge really lies. Yeah. It makes sense. Isn't it? Yeah. And can you explain the concept? So I'll tell you what this guy told me when I was speaking to him about it. He's like, he's got 30 credit cards or something, right? And yep. they've all got labels on them for what they are designed for, for him. So one's groceries, one's yeah. bills, one's rent, yep. whatever. And the idea is to hit pointers on those credit cards to get the maximum amount of points. And once you maximize yep. the deal or the offer, you close it and you look for another ones. So is that is that generally the concept of trying to accumulate all these points to travel or to do whatever you want? I would say that's an approach. Cool. I generally say yeah. there are three approaches to credit cards. The maximalist approach, which is what sounds like he was doing, which yeah. is get a credit card, hit the sign up bonus, like yeah. get the minimum spend to earn the big bonus. And then after a year, you just close the card. That's oversimplifying. There are cards you keep. Then there would be what I would say the second tier is like kind of a hub and supplement where you create kind of a card hub of you know, four to six cards, they have bonus categories and benefits that help you earn points faster and just provide benefits like lounge access or trip delay protection, whatever you have this hub of cards, and then you supplement kind of here and there based on what you want to do, or what you want to book, and you get a new sign up bonus kind of occasionally. And then there's the kind of just keep it simple, stupid, like get one to three cards, never think about it again. And all approaches are valid. It's just kind of you go from the fastest way to earn points to the slowest, but you also go from the most complicated effort to the least complicated. And it just depends where you are in your level of interest, your bandwidth, yeah. how much you feel like you can keep track of. Like I have had clients who are small business owners. They just spend a lot of money on credit cards. They're like, I don't have time to get a bunch of cards, but I spend $20 million a year on credit cards. I'm like, great. You don't need a ton of sign up bonuses. 
Yeah, they're going to get them. For you, it's just like making sure you have your, or you're earning the right points. Like, yes. It's not about cool. do yeah. you earn enough. It's just are you earning the ones that are going to help you travel based on what you want. Like, and that's a different conversation. So again, it's it's very. There's some kind of broad, I think, structural things, but it's it's personalized after that. You have to kind of make that choice for yourself and like which direction you want to go. So that's based on your own situation and I guess your yeah. own job and spending power. So yeah, for absolutely. example, my friend's an editor of a of a weekly magazine in the UK and he's always expensed everything through his work because mostly he travels for work. So he's got millions yeah. of points to use personally, right? So yes, yeah, so I guess that's my great. point, my question is for well, straight to the points, do you concentrate on one of those three or does it not matter what I don't, situation? I, it, it's if you have points and want to travel, I'm here to help you <laughs> fly at the front of the plane. That's pretty much what it is. <laughs> the kind of entry is, oh, I have points and generally a decent amount of points because business class flights, you know, one way to Europe on the cheapest end is like 34,000 points one way. That's super cheap, but it could be depending on like which airline, 87,000 one ways. So you're generally booking round trip, you double it. You know, you're, you need a decent number of points. In the U.S., it's a lot easier because, as as you found out, people have 30 credit cards if they want them, and they all have sign up bonuses. And then maybe after a few years, you get it again. And I mean, there's just it's it's I mean, it's there's definitely that kind of game aspect. Loyalty programs yes. have the gamification side of things. Sometimes banks and airlines and hotels regret that, but it's also a big part of why people like play and get sure. engaged with their products. So it's, it's, uh, I do feel like it's a, it's a double-edged sword in a sense. Uh, okay. It makes it sound worse than it is, but it's uh, for, for them. But yeah. And then on the consumer side, it's one of those things where I always tell people is like, you don't want to get into this if you don't have really strong financial habits or you're just, yes. or if you're not in yes. a position, like mm. if you're not in a position to pay everything off, like don't play this game. It's not worth getting into it. There are more important things to focus on. Um, so it's more like, is this the right time for you? <laughs> um, I mean, back when I first got out of college, this was not the, the that was not the right time for me. I was sure. barely making any money. Uh, <laughs> I was just like, like I just wasn't, I wasn't going to be able to hit the minimum spends for sign up bonuses on cards. And I, sh and it's not a, it's not a good idea to just go spend money to spend money to go hit a bonus. So yeah, it's a, uh, yeah, you just kind of, you want to make sure you're in a good position before you kind of delve into financial products. Like I'm not a financial advisor, like go talk <laughs> yeah. to yours, that kind of thing. <laughs> but I just like, I don't want to see anybody do something that's a hobby that causes any kind of harm. Yeah, I totally get that. Because when I, when he told me about the 30 credit cards thing, I think two things came to mind. One, yeah. organization. I'm like, can am I organized Huge. to keep track of all that? And you spreadsheets yeah. and everything. I'm like, I don't think that's for me. And obviously, two is the spending thing, right? Do I do I spend enough to get all those things? Yeah. You know, loyalty bonuses, sign up bonuses, and that's the yeah. the question, right? It's and that's and that's why I tell people it's like you don't have to do this if it's all just overwhelming. Two percent cashback credit card in the U.S. like super easy. Yeah, you don't have to think. Like, just don't trouble yourself. It's this is niche. This is like obsessed travelers who want to do more travel or travel nicer and they want to travel nicer more often. And then to some extent, it's just like some of us just love it. Yeah. And so we do it. But... <laughs> okay. How does the Straight to the Points award alerts work in terms of, I guess, alerting people for deals? Yeah. The the main thrust of it is like I'm searching for award space to send out. Now I'm trying to do more than like, oh, here's one date. What I'm generally looking for is like, I want to see like a chunk, like two, three, four, five, six months, 10 dates in each month, like, I guess, preferably round trip. Um, yep. And so I'll get those dates, I'll put into the newsletter and I'll share like the different points you can use. So as an example, I think you said you, you've been spending time in Canada. Air Canada Aeroplan is a Star Alliance program. You can book any of their partners with aeroplane points. And yep. so you can also do that with United Miles or Singapore Chris Flyer. They're all star lines. So I'll list all the different programs you can use to book, but I'll also include a section where I explain like, here's why you want to use this one. <laughs> here's why you want to use this one. And it's based around the points that are available in the US, especially with credit cards. So it's mm -hmm. kind of like, if you earn Amex points, this is your best option. If you have city points, this is your best option. And just kind of like, breaking down like how to think about using your points where it may be the case where maybe American miles are the cheapest for one, but 
they're really hard to earn. So maybe using Cathay Pacific's program, since they're easier to earn, but they can mm. book the same flight. It's just kind of working through this decision tree for people. So that's, I honestly, that is the educational component of what I do. The other part is just very much like, here's how to find the space. Here's the points you want to use. Here's how many you need. Go do it. This part is where I think people, and I've had readers tell me this, where they start to think about points differently. And so if they need to travel somewhere and it's not just, them waiting for an alert, they're able to take what they've learned from this section and apply it then when they're going out to book something specifically. So it's, uh, I'm trying to get you on the plane, but if, if the deal isn't right for you in that moment, I'm still trying to like help you kind of push forward and make this easier for you. Okay. I, I like the fact that you break down the specifics to which each card can give you. So what I mean by that is for me, cause I don't know too much about it. It's more like probably get one credit card. I'll hit the sign up bonus points and get 50 100 000, whatever it is and i'll just spend it yep. on travel yeah. i like the fact that you, you could even advise if you've got 10 credit cards maybe they're better for i don't know buying gas because yeah. they give you five times the points whatever it is right so you break it down into that granular level so that's and that's so that aspect the earning side is really interesting to me so i think and this is how i think about it where it's like if you have a points program where i know people are going to earn these points faster that means using a few more might not be a bad thing compared to a you know a program where it's like I'm going to be earning them really slowly. If you if you have a program like that, they may be really valuable. American Airlines specifically, like their miles are really valuable, but you don't want to just like throw them away on something that you could have booked easily with something else knowing that maybe they have an award rate for a particular flight that is just amazing value. And you know you want to do that. Yeah. <laughs> Hold yeah. those for that. Like go book that where you can access it or can't access it as easily with another program. So again, it's just, uh, I understand why it's so complicated. And a lot of people are like, oh, I don't want to think about this. That's fine. I get it. That's why I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> just here to try to make the process easier. It sounds like another job. I mean, it is a natural job to really work out all these nuances, right? Yeah. And it's, it's fun. And some of it's just fun trips for people. Other times it's, they're going to see family they haven't seen yeah, yeah, yeah. in ages or they're, I mean, uh, I mean, I remember there was a client, a uh, client, a reader or whatever, like that was going to introduce their kids to their like extended family in India. Like it's not a cheap ticket. Even if right. you're paying cash for economy, it can be a thousand dollars, more than a thousand dollars to go to India. Yeah. And so, I mean, the, even if you can book two tickets, if you have a family of four, but you can book two of them with points, like you've cut your costs in half. Mm. Like that's... Mm. It's, it doesn't have to be all or nothing. And I think there's something amazing about that where you can kind of connect people around the world thanks to points. Uh, yeah, that's pretty yeah. cool. Yeah, yeah, I like that because there's a, there's a certain, how can I put this? There's a bit of genuine thinking behind it. It's not just like get this points and get this money. It's more about trying to connect people who maybe yeah. mm -hmm. might find it hard to really actually travel that far because of costs or whatever, yep. right? And you're trying to help those Absolutely. guys and reduce the costs. Yeah. And it's, I mean, I had back surgery several, several years ago and I've met many people who are just like, I cannot fly across the world at economy without being sure. in excruciating pain. Yeah. And like, if I can help you, and, but again, knowing how to use all these programs to maximize them is very difficult. If I can take away that stress and you don't have to spend all your free time figuring that out, mm -hmm. <laughs> you can go do your job, hang out with your kids, hang out with your friends, have hobbies, and then I'll just kind of show you what to do. And you don't have to be miserable. <laughs> I feel like- this is a good, this is a good, it's a good option. Yeah. Yeah. I can't, I can't see anything wrong with it. Um, yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> How does the straight to the points, um, sort of membership levels work? Cause you have, is it two yeah. or three levels, right? So it's, there's the free version. I call it economy. It's yeah. basically less information in the newsletter, 72 plus hours after the premium members get it. I'll still give you kind of a date range. I'll still tell you what airline, how many seats. It's you just decide that you're okay missing out on some deals because they're not going to be there anymore because you'll get it late. And you've decided that you know points so well that you don't need any help. What I do find though is people are really good at points, appreciate not having to find all the dates. And so they actually really <laughs> like getting the premium version. Yeah. That's that's the free version. And then there's a monthly and an annual version of the premium version. Same, same benefits. You just get, I think it's a 45% discount if you do the annual, if you mm -hmm. look at it as a 12 month thing. So yeah, so monthly is $14.99, annual is $99. So, so it's a much better deal to do it. Just like when booking travel, thinking long term is important. Um, yeah, those are the those are the different levels, and basically, just premium gets 
priority. You get yeah. it early, you get all the details. Like I'm, I'm spelling it out for you. And then um, I also, for my U S readers, uh, this you'll, you'll see there's a mission here. I just want what's best for my readers, whatever that is. And so when it comes to getting credit cards, while I have affiliate links, like a lot of creators yeah. in the point space, if my affiliate doesn't have the best offer, I'm going to collect referrals from my readers if they have the best offer via um, their own referral. So like the best way to think is affiliates, a business relationship, referrals are coming from you as a card holder. You're mm -hmm. allowed to refer somebody. So if I can get an applicant the best offer by giving them your referral and you can get some referral points as a bonus, like I'm happy to connect. So that's another benefit of being a premium member. So they get to earn extra points, which then helps them travel more. And is there like a time component to this? Because if you're a premium member and you get it 72 hours before the free one, is there sort of time limit on the offer? Yeah. So if you find something that's maybe really good, but maybe loads of other people know it as well, maybe like some other guy like used in the same thing, okay. is there a bit of a race it's, to get that booked? The, it depends on the airline that you're booking. In the past, we, this is an older example, but Qantas out of Australia. Oh, Australia. Um, yeah. They rarely, and they still rarely release like business and first class space to the US on their flights, especially for two people. It's been a while actually since I've seen it. But there was a time, I mean, I remember this is years ago. I sent an alert and I think something like within an hour, 30 people had told me they'd booked anywhere from two to four seats each for like <laughs> themselves. And within about three hours, Honest pulled the space, it was gone. And I, I remember a friend of mine, like sending me a text message, just enraged that he just like wasn't by his phone and didn't yeah, see yeah, it yeah. and he didn't get it. And he, I was like, I don't know, man, like, you know loose. the rules here. Like, you know yeah. the rules, have your phone by you. Uh, but there, I mean, there are some like that. So, and I also send some cash fares here and there. And sometimes cash fares are just insanely good and they go really quickly. So it's sometimes it's hours, sometimes it's a day, two, three days, whatever. But that's the the only way you're guaranteeing you're getting what I'm sending is if you're on the premium list to get it right away. Yeah. And I mean, again, I've had things disappear within an hour. And sometimes people will, even on the premium list, they're like, I don't see anything. And I'm like, ah, oh, yeah, that that lasted 50 minutes. <laughs> and it's uh, so now also the premium list gets text messages. That was my solution oh, to that. Because yeah. I, I understand some people don't want their email. Like you get so much spam email. You don't want your course yeah, getting yeah. a ping constantly. So I was like, I will send you a text message. <laughs> so now people have the option to get texts and that helps. Uh, I remember having a reader, he texted back, please stop sending these on, on my long drives. I can't keep pulling up. Oh, keep so yeah, it's a yeah, uh, crash the car. It's fun. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, that's the, the gist of the newsletter. Um, it's just making things easier for people to fly in the front of the plane when they're flying, you know, six, seven, eight, 14 hours, whatever. Um, mm. How does it work for like exact itineraries? So how flexible do you need to be for these points? So I would say what I do is I'm trying to find the nonstop flight out of the US or Canada. Okay. I include Canadian departures because I do have some Canadian readers. The, the idea is that let's say the flight's out of JFK in New York. Mm -hmm. If you live in Boston, you may be able to get a connection as part of the award ticket. And if you can't, there's often like a cheap flight you can just get from Boston to JFK and we call it repositioning. So you just get yourself to JFK. You got to make sure you leave yourself enough time just in case sure. there's delays. Yeah. But it just makes, so it, rather than thinking about it as like, oh, the deal starts here. That's not for me. It's, it's more about like, okay, is there a connection? Is there a positioning flight? Does, as someone who lives in DC, we have a major airport in Washington, Dulles, but I go to JFK all the time. And <laughs> Honestly, yeah. like it's usually a positioning flight. There's just not a lot of like connecting award space when I'm booking. And so I'm just getting my own flight. If I'm going to Newark, just outside of DC, I take the train, <laughs> just um, whatever it takes. Um, so yeah, there's, there's a lot of that. I mean, I'm somebody who's crazy enough to position to like Vancouver from DC, but if you offer me a seven, like $670 business class ticket to Sydney from Vancouver, I'm going to like make my way over there. Got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That makes sense. Um, that's like, it's like trains in the UK. If you can get like a decent train for a decent price, uh, you can make just a, go. another way there to get that train. Yeah. Right. So yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So if you're, if you're looking for something specifically, what I tend to tell people is like, I send four to five of these a week, sometimes more oh, okay. things just go crazy. I always try like, my rule is I'm not going to send you something just so I can say, Hey, I sent you something this week. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm, yeah. I'm not here to blow up your inbox and waste your time. It, I'm going to send enough that like, I'm probably going to hit what you want. 
and I'm probably going to hit dates you can go. Mm -hmm. And so there's a, like, you have good odds. Now, if you decide to just go book something else anyway, like, great, more power to you. I'm just happy for going, but I'm probably going to hit it at some point. So it's just a matter of like, That's does timing. the route work for you on the mm -hmm. date that are you, are you able to commit to booking at that time? I mean, it's just, it just depends where you are. And sometimes, I mean, some people it's like, I can't book until we're within like two months. So I send some of those just to like mix it up. Mm -hmm. Others I send. I mean, one thing I would say is like, if you want to travel in the summer, start thinking about it at the end of the previous summer, because especially to Europe, let me specify from the US to Europe, just like that's peak time to go and they're going to sell cash tickets. So you've got to be ready to book whatever award space is available and they're not going to make a lot of it available, especially as you get closer. And so inevitably every like March, April and May, I hear from people saying like, oh, I just can't find anything. There's nothing. And I was like, I know I sent it last August. Like it's, it's over. We did so, this. Every, so right, and every right, time. <laughs> so right now is for next year, next summer basically. Oh, I'm already sending stuff for next summer. Yeah. yeah. Okay, and, yeah. and I'll even mention it in the email. I'm like, this is the time to be booking next summer. And I know not everyone can commit to that, but if you can, like that's uh, and I'll keep doing it all the way up into like February. And once we hit like March, I'm like, you're pl you're on, you're playing on like borrowed time here. <laughs> like you need to know that it's going to get really difficult. Um, and that's okay. I mean, it's again, it, it's part of the game. We, we adapt and, you know, find our path. I think this sort of mentality is key for periods of time like Christmas, right? Because we're looking at Christmas clients going home to UK yep. from Canada nightmare because they're so expensive. Yeah. So you need, yeah. I think I'm thinking, oh, I, I should have been a bit more on it early this year, right? Because they get booked up, they go up in price. And if you don't have points at the time, you lose yep. out. So I guess timing is key, but also being organized to make sure it's... if you go, if you're going in like hot summer or Easter or Christmas, yep. you've got to get on it. It's, it's almost a game of flexibility. Uh, the more flexible you can be, the easier it is. Are you willing to do two stops instead of nonstop or one stop? Are yeah. you willing mm. to position? Are you willing to travel on different dates? Are you willing, like, I mean, all these things, the more you're willing to do, the easier it is. And like, some people don't have that ability. I mean, sure. it's definitely tough when you have kids and they have school schedules or, yeah. or you're a teacher. I mean, that's a really tough one for teachers where it's like, no, no, I can't go until the summer. I know it's the worst, isn't it? I can't like... go until the, the premium times. <laughs> and then it's like, <laughs> yeah. And it's, so it's, and it's, it's, uh, and like some people just have the cash to throw a business class. And so what if it's $8,000 round trip right now, because mm -hmm. it's peak time, they do it. But a teacher's like, ha, I'm a teacher. Like it's, I mean, it's a really tough thing for teachers, I think, to travel internationally. That's just hearing from readers. It's just, I don't envy that. Um, but it's, I think there's a lot of people who are in that position in different ways. Uh, and so it's seeing how flexible you can be with what you're doing. Sometimes that just means going at a different time. Sometimes mm -hmm. it means flying in a day or two earlier, later than you initially had planned. And just sometimes just shifting your schedule. Hopefully that's, I mean, to me, that's like the win. Sometimes it's like, oh, there's nothing this month. Let's see if I can go next month. Mm -hmm. And that, that sucks. But if you're not traveling for an event, you're just traveling for fun. Then mm -hmm. I think a lot of people are able to make it work. Again, it's not everyone. There's lots of different circumstances, but yeah, it's flexibility is, it, it frees you up so much. I mean, even just like destination, if, like I was saying, if you want to go to Japan, but France is available, like. Mm. If you're flexible enough to just be like, oh, I'm going to go to France instead. Great. Or vice versa. I mean, it's just, uh, yeah, flexibility will make using points a lot easier. Yeah, that's probably the key, isn't it? Flexibility. Because I was talking to my friend the other day about that teachers that they do get a lot of time off, but then they can only go away in the premium yeah. times. Yeah. So it depends how much they value travel because they're going to always be going to busy places unless they go somewhere extreme. Yeah. yeah. And that, I mean valuing travel, I think is a really key point. Uh, I always, I talk about it as like, do, is it a priority? Um, mm. It doesn't have to be like, it's, it's a privilege to be able to like, oh, I think yeah. I've gone to something like, I don't know, 60 countries. I'm not a country counter, but somewhere in that ballpark. And like, I'm so lucky to have done that. But I also like spend all my time thinking about travel. <laughs> and so, yeah, tell me about it. But you get it. You get it. So yeah, yeah. that doesn't have to be the way it is for everybody. But you can't then be upset when things don't fall in your lap exactly yeah. as you want them to. Like things will fall into my lap. I'm currently trying to find my way to Kuwait, and I'm just not having luck with my award tickets that I want that I need okay. for the dates yeah. that I need them. And yeah. I and in this case have stricter travel dates than I usually do. So I'm like every day just kind of staring at things, being like, well, what if I 
go to Chicago and then I fly to Rome and then I fly to Bahrain and then I fly to Kuwait. Yeah. Like this is, but again, I'm willing to be a little bit nutty. So it's, yeah, it's, again, it's, it's priorities and we can't always prioritize travel. I get that. Uh, but I think for me, from like the, from the audience that I work with, there are people who say, oh, I can't spend money on travel. And I'm like, I understand points yeah. is good. Points are great. But also I saw you spend $4,000 going out to eat last month. But like, yeah. eating, and that's cool. You love going out to eat. It's DC. It's expensive, whatever. That's cool. But you can't say that you can't travel. You can tell me that you care more about going out to eat. That's fine. I don't care. Like, they just prioritize to be honest. whatever you love. They just need yeah, to be honest with be it. Honest yeah. with yeah, and yeah. like, I'm somebody who just rarely goes out to eat unless I'm traveling. <laughs> I just don't care. And that's fine. But it's, uh, I mean, I don't do other things because I want to have a bigger budget for whether it's hotels, because I like nice hotels and, mm -hmm. or I just want to go to try more food while I'm traveling. Like, that's how I prioritize things. So I think there's, there's a lot of that. You just have to think about what matters to you. Um, yeah, and that, I mean, even good. Sorry, I was saying that that, that goes across anything. Like, I, I, yeah. I spoke to someone who uh, gets clients for her business, and they say they can't afford it yet. They're going to spend two thousand dollars on a pram or something, right? So they they have got <laughs> the money, but it's just the prioritization of what yeah. you really want. And that even goes to the careers, isn't it? Like in terms of if you're if you are a teacher, right? But you really want to travel, but traveling as a teacher is expensive because you're always going in premium times, and you got to weigh up as to well, can I change my career so I can travel in non-expensive yeah. parts of the, yeah. the year, right? Like, or, know, can you like leverage, or can you leverage what you're doing already to be able... I mean, I do know teachers who do an amazing job. They go mm. to... And this isn't like they do simple trips. They go do like multi-week things through Southeast Asia and they find... I mean, they hit the big cities, they hit the small cities, they mm. hit rural areas like that. And they and they figure it out. But it's like they put a lot of effort into those trips. Yeah. Um, they, that's... But that's what they care about. And that's where I think it's, I don't know, I try to come at, come at it from a place of understanding. I think we are all better off in that doing so, where it's just like, some of us are going to care about this. Some of us aren't. Yeah, that's fine. We can all be okay with that. If you like going to concerts, spend all your money on concerts. You like going out to eat, do yeah, that. Exactly. If you yeah. love, if you love clothes or shoes or hats or whatever, I don't care. Like sports, go to, go to all the different like, football matches and baseball games. Like, I'm happy for you. Um, and my obsession is travel and that's where I can help people. So that's why I prioritize. <laughs> Same. And we can talk about that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I've got a question for your website. I don't really know what it means, but I'm going to yes. ask you, do you also send out cash deals for premium cabin flights? I'm not really sure what cash yes. deal even means. If I'm honest. Yeah. So I do send out cash fares. Business class is generally where that is and generally to Europe. Occasionally there's something so good that doesn't have anything to do with the US or Canada that I'll send it anyway. But just because I know I have some readers who are crazy like me and happy to go book a flight from like South Korea to Africa somewhere. Where was that one to? Was it Kenya or South Africa? I don't know. It was from South Korea though. I sent that and somebody booked it. So, oh, so awesome. <laughs> I know I I know I have them in my audience as well. But yeah, I do send the occasional cash fare. It's not what I focus on as much, but you know, if there's a if there's a really good fare, I'll send it. Hey, yeah, just a quick one. I just want to say there are many ways to support this podcast. You can buy me a coffee and help support the podcast with $5. Or you can go to my merch store with the affiliate link with TeePublic, where there's plenty of merch available to buy, such as t-shirts, jumpers, hoodies, and also some children's clothing. Thirdly, which is free, you can also rate and review this podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Podchaser, or Good Pods. Also, you can find me on social media on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and TikTok. Simply just search for Winging It Travel Podcast and you'll find me displaying all my social media content for traveling, podcast, and other stuff. Thank you. So the cash cash fare just means a generic fare for a ticket. That's all it means. Yep. Just, just pay in cash. Mm -hmm. Just pay, yeah. Okay. Yeah. You can earn you can earn miles off of it, of course. And I do have readers in, in my audience who do have status with particular airlines and that's just kind of like a bonus that makes it easier for them to maintain it. So. Okay. And do you always concentrate on North America or do you sometimes dip into international sure. credit card markets, if you like, or if they've got some deals that seem super cool with your readers yeah. as well? I guess they're kind of worldwide, I imagine. So I my Instagram audience is more international than my newsletter. So my okay. newsletter, I send 
the focus is based on the points that are available in the US because I know the credit card market here and I'm I'm not going to misguide somebody and act like I know what's going on other places. <laughs> and it's just very different here than other places. I do send a lot of alerts from Canada. And there's a number of people in Canada who also have access to US credit cards. So it it's yes. easier that yeah. way. But they also have cards that are in Aeroplan points and a different version of Amex membership rewards than we have, but enough partners where it, like there's enough overlap. And again, it's departing from North America. It's more consistent. And I think a lot of Canadians who are very into travel are used to positioning to the U S to yeah. get a flight. So yeah. if you're in Toronto, maybe the flights out of JFK, it's, I mean, it's basically flying from DC. It's the same distance. Now mm -hmm. you got to deal with immigration. I get, but it's still like a quick flight over. So I do focus on the U S and Canadian, uh, flights. That's good to know that Canadians listen can, uh, and get something like that as well yeah because i i think aeroplan's next on my hit list for next year right i haven't really i've concentrated on a few other cars this year good but, program uh, and yeah yes yeah, it's, it's on my list for next year so um yeah i'm keen to get that it's, it's uh it's interesting so like all my friends in the uk there's just like a an attachment to british airways what, i can't ever points. tell if it's a, yeah. i can't ever tell if it's a healthy relationship or not but like <laughs> it's a strong relationship i think uk is interesting because we are attached to BA because they go long haul and they go to yep. a lot of destinations. But flying in Europe is super cheap anyway. You know, yeah. I booked a flight to Greece from London for $20 one way. I mean, there's no point yeah. in getting into points for that, is there? Yep. I so, think, I, think I, yeah. I booked, uh, I think I'd flown into every airport but Luton in London. And I booked a flight on Wizz Air from Sarajevo to Luton for like, 40 bucks or something yeah yeah a couple that, of years ago yeah. and i was i remember thinking at the time i was like such a great deal this is great and then i had to be at, i had to like be at the airport at 4 30 in the morning or something oh, no. and i was and i was just like sarajevo was fun getting up at 4 30 was not fun God. <laughs> it was it was dark out there was like fog and i was like yeah, this tracks <laughs> like this is what it should feel like at 4 30 in the morning <laughs> i think our flight to greece was was there and that that was early yeah. as well yeah that seems yep. really cool but we make not it. the best airline, but hey, no, cheap. I don't love when the armrest won't move because I can't like get a little yeah. extra room. And then mm -hmm. the seat, the like the pitch is so, so small that, you know, again, six, three, my knees are in the basically in the person's back in front of me. <laughs> like, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, OK, I've got a couple of questions mm -hmm. about what is the premium uh, referral program? What does that do? Yeah. So that's, if you're a premium member, you can refer others to the premium um, in premium version and get 10 bucks for everybody who signs up for the annual version. Okay. Just a way to say, to me, the points in travel world, it's a very much a community and yeah. it's just, I'm just a small way to kind of give back and say thanks to uh, my readers who are kind of helping spread the word. Okay. And any hot travel credit cards right now? What's the big one right now? The Capital One Venture card currently has a higher offer than it's had in a long time. Um, 75,000 points plus a $250 Capital One travel credit. Uh, minimum spends like $4,000 in three months. That one, but that bonus is ending in like a week, 10 days, something like that. So mm -hmm. that's kind of what people are thinking about. The other one in the on the business side is the Chasing Preferred bonus of 120,000 points. If you spend $6,000 in three months, that's ending on September 9th. So that's what everybody's talking about at the moment. Okay. You know, everybody waits to the last minute. And any Canadian ones or a Canadian one? I don't think of. I, I'm no. not even going to pretend to give you bad <laughs> advice. Fair enough. <laughs> and I've got a couple of questions. So how can you and your team assist with someone getting started with that today? Yeah. So we have a, a quick start guide on the site. Uh, it's under resources. If you go to my website, uh, truly it's meant to just give you a quick overview of kind of the main points that you just need to understand to make sense of what anybody's yeah. talking. Like it's, it can be really overwhelming to walk into people who are really in or to a conversation with people who are really into points and you hear all these terms and words and you're like, this means nothing. And I get that we've all been there. So this is mostly about just getting you up to speed so that you can even understand the help that someone's going to give you. Yeah. Um, Makes sense. And so I think that's just like, I, th I look at it as just like, when you learn anything new, everything is going to feel overwhelming at first. And you just have to be patient with yourself. It's just like one step at a time, you build a kind of foundational understanding and then you can apply that same kind of method of learning to each thing that you learn within the kind of points and travel world. So you just have to 
do a little work up front to get the <laughs> benefits after. Yeah. And the website is there for people to sign up and yep. obviously find out more about what you do. Yeah. It's uh, straight to the points.co. It's not .com. Somebody oh. owns that and won't sell it to me. It doesn't even use it. just sits on it. I'll put that yeah, in the show .co. notes to make sure uh, yeah. it'll click the right <laughs> Every link. time I send somebody my email, I'm like .co, not .com in parentheses. <laughs> yeah. That's a bit annoying though, isn't it? Because .com is the default, isn't it? Yep, yeah, it is. And sometimes people just instinctually hit it and they think they didn't. And then they realize they just sent it to the wrong email. Oh, well. Okay. And they can sign up for a newsletter through that website as well. Yep. Yep. Sign up is right there. There's a button on the homepage. And what about social media? Are you, where are you guys more prevalent there? Instagram is where I'm active. Mm. Um, yeah, it's straight at straight to the points is the handle. Yeah. I'm, I'm in there every week. I try to answer pretty much all my DMS. It's hard sometimes. Um, and now there's like the hidden requests yes. box. So yeah. occasionally I get something. I'm like, where did that come from? Like it's just, Somebody's been buried in there for two weeks amongst everybody telling me how I can get more followers or sell me yeah, jewelry spam. or shoes. Yeah, yeah. And I'm just like, <laughs> I'm sorry, I tried to get to you. I just didn't <laughs> see it not amongst all of this. Okay. And I put the no, nothing else, no TikTok, no. No, that's X or anything Instagram's like. my thing. Yeah. Okay. I think it's our generation probably. Yeah. Do you think it's our generation who, I guess, would you call yourself a millennial? You must be millennial. Yeah, right? I'm a yeah, millennial. Same. Yep. So I guess we are... The generation kind of doing it right at the minute i guess like early doors we're getting the credit cards we probably earn an okay now yeah i guess must be yeah the... that's gen x you got gen x gen i mean you've got well. a lot yeah. within the travel world i mean it's so interesting to see the differences there's there are people who are what was before gen x boomer yep that boomer yeah yep. and like they like you can see patterns amongst i can see patterns amongst my readers who are in the boomer generation the gen x generation everything i mean to me generations are all kind of contrived whatever we're all just people doing things yeah, yeah, but cool. but you can see i think just like anything as you move through life you prioritize different things um and i also do like i do hotel bookings and like luxury hotels for clients these are cash bookings but you can see the difference in like somebody who wants to be in the party scene when they're at a hotel, <laughs> yeah. and yeah. then someone who very much does not and wants <laughs> quiet. But I would be willing to bet that somebody who's currently asking me for like the hotel that has like the best pool vibe and everything, yeah. like in 30 years, they're gonna be like, please keep me away from all of this. Yeah. And it's just like, it's, and maybe not, maybe they will continue to, but there's yeah, definitely maybe. like, it just depends, depends where you are in life. What about the Gen Z's? Are they into this? Do you find? Is there yeah, many on your, on your, on your list? They're coming up. It's definitely more millennial uh, okay. Gen X heavy right now. But yeah, yeah, it's uh, just like anything as you start making. I mean, again, if you're going to hit minimum spends to earn points on credit cards, you've got to have the income to yes. one support getting the card. You have to have built your credit score up to be, to be able to get the credit cards. Mm -hmm. And so that you're not just spending to spend, you actually yep. want to have, you know, you, you want to be living within your means still. And so. It's kind of as people can get into that first job that pays them a bit better than like being the new guy yeah, or, or the yeah. new gal at some at some big company. So it's it's only once you kind of get in a bit deeper that you are able to do everything. So okay, that's awesome. I've got one more question about this, and just came up to me, so it's a bit random. So apologize, yeah. not on the notes. Amex cards, never had one, right? Yep. Yep. Now, am I wrong to assume that if you have an Amex card in UK, Canada, US? that if you're based one year in each, for example, and you never spend any points that you can transfer across to wherever you are at the current time and they work on the same, under the un, same um, umbrella. Like, so the membership rewards, so like the UK, Canada, the US, Australia, a bunch of other countries, they all have Amex membership rewards. Yeah. Each program is different. So okay. you have different transfer partners, different transfer ratios. The US is typically one to one or with a minimum transfer of a thousand points. That's the standard. But the, a lot of countries, it's different than that. Australia right. has some pretty bad transfer ratios. UK okay. is not as bad. Neither is Canada. But like it just it depends. I know Germany has membership awards and they transfer to a different set of partners. And it's just, yeah, it's uh, every country is different. And that's I mean, it's. Mm probably the reason i haven't like tried to create like a europe version of this because yeah. every country in europe has a completely different set of credit cards while the u.s geographically is massive but we all have the same access to the same credit card so Got it's it. just like it, it's 
the, um, if I could figure out the UK and the EU, <laughs> yeah, I'm just like thinking of, I was like, I couldn't do it in the same newsletter. I'd have to have <laughs> but a 13 different versions. Years, yeah, that'd be yeah. mental. Yeah. 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 I guess, I guess my question would have been like, yeah, is there like a universal credit card? But I guess there's not. No, every country no. has their own rules and yeah, everything's on their own. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I think with Canada, you have a special rule for Quebec. So that makes it a bit more complicated oh, maybe as well. Yeah. It's always like, Small text at the bottom of anything that says oh, oh. Quebec different rules. <laughs> okay, right. Okay. No idea why. On the minefield. The more okay. you know. I've got some uh, some quick uh, quick fire but fun travel questions. My first question is a type of traveller. What are you? Maybe that's changed from travelling in the nineties to early two thousands to now. So what's that journey been like? Yeah. Were you more budget back then or have you always been mid range to luxury? How do you see yourself? Yeah, I would say I'm I'm definitely more luxury. Tra I mean, flights, obviously, that's like since I got into points, I've been into the business and yeah. first class side of things. But hotels, I'm more luxury now, much more than I used to be. I mean, I'm a travel advisor. I like to go to the properties and see them so that I can recommend things for clients. But mm. I also just have grown to really enjoy them and to like, for me, it's fun to see them and like to see them operate. It's it's some some properties just really good at executing. And it's just fascinating to see that happen. Mm -hmm. um, but before, I mean, when I first got into points, I wanted to fly at the front of the plane and then I just wanted a place to stay. And I was never, I was never going to be in the hotel. Like occasionally I would do something because it was just like fun. I think I booked the park high at Sydney with points because it was just absurd and it looked really cool. So I did that. But I think the day before I was there, was it like a holiday in express or something? I was never a hostile person, I guess I would say. I did that okay. in college when I went to the UK with a friend whose family's from the UK um, and just had a gross shower experience. And I was like, this is just not me. <laughs> I was like, I'm out. I, th I think I think I was at a hostel in like Oxford or something. And I was like, can't okay. do it. I don't know. I don't like this. So <laughs> it was so I started with cheap hotels, but nice flights and a very shortly after kind of getting into all this, I was working from wherever I was. So mm -hmm. I don't really take vacation or holiday. I uh, probably should, but I work from wherever I am. And so at that point, like, oh, having a club lounge at the hotel was really mm -hmm. nice because I hate working from my room. Breakfast is not typically the meal where I'm going to try things. Mm -hmm. And so I would just post up in the club lounge and do my work. I got on my room and I knew breakfast was there. I didn't have to think about where I was going. I just got my stuff done and then I was out. Um, Okay. Depending on where I was going, I might reverse that and go in the evening, depending on what work I had. But that was that was my style for a, a long time. Now I'm trying to more, like get a more of an experience while I'm there, even though yeah. I'm still working. That's my uh, next so question, I'm... really. Like during the day, do you try and get maybe like a walking tour in, or like how do you get your experiences yeah. in? I love walking tours. Mm. I absolutely do. And honestly, like I've done paid ones that are amazing. I've done free ones that are amazing. It's like anywhere and it's tough to know. I think recommendations are great. I always like to ask people. Now when I get, like when I have great tours, I recommend them in my newsletter. When I send things out, and it's like, there's this guy named Antonio in Lisbon who just, <laughs> I mean, an amazing guide. And so now whenever I send out a flight deal to Lisbon, I'm like, hey, if you need someone, he'll hook oh, you yeah. up. He's great. great. Same thing in Egypt. I've worked with a guide there a couple of times and I've sent countless readers and friends there and everybody loves him. And so anytime I send something for like Egypt, I'm just like, Hey, get a hold of Taha. He'll take care <laughs> of you. And like, and people do, and they're like, he's amazing. And I'm like, this is, I think that's how, I don't know. It's so hard to find what, or figure out who to trust, yeah, um, trust. when yeah. it comes to guides, because it could just be somebody who just doesn't really care that much. Of course, or you yeah. could have somebody who just like brings a place to life. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. If I'm, if I could meet anybody like that, I want them to like, one, I want them to have more clients, but two, <laughs> I just want all my readers to like have that kind of that same experience uh, when they go somewhere. Do you have a, a guy recommendation for San Salvador? Have you been to El Salvador? I don't. A friend of mine worked there for a while. I could ask him for you, though. Oh, that'd be great. Yeah, I'm going there in November. So I'm, there we go. Well, my technique with a podcast is if you want to get a local interview, the best way to get a local interview is guides. Because yeah. if you go and get your guide or whatever you use to get guides, free walking tours, they generally speak English because they are doing it in English because internationally that's language, right? And you just got to yeah. like hope that they're comfortable speaking English. Then they're likely to say yes to come on the podcast and talk for 30 minutes about their country. And it's amazing, right? So that's my technique that's awesome. for getting local interviews like when you're traveling. Yeah. Yeah. It's speaking English is like the cheat code. Like It is. Yeah. I, not, I mean, so lucky. It's not like I figured it out like in a video game back when I was a kid. <laughs> yeah. no, I just, I was just handed the cheat code. Yeah. Um, it's wild, but yeah. 
It's uh, pretty wild. Okay, and then has there been a country or place that you traveled to that blew your mind? I love Taiwan. Oh, yeah. I, it's When I mention it, I get a lot of like, oh, I love Thailand. And I'm like, no, it's not Thailand. <laughs> also, a great, also a great country and great food, but different food. And yeah, I think Taiwan has just, I think it has amazing food. I think people are super friendly, helpful, welcoming. I've been to Taipei several times, but I've also like, I took high speed rail down to Kaohsiung at the oh, southern same. tip. So we did and, same thing. Yeah. And then yeah. came back through Jai and then okay. yeah. uh, great city for food. Um, and then went to, I think it was Taichung on the way to, I'm probably mispronouncing everything. I'm sorry, but, um, <laughs> and then came back to Taipei and I've been to Taipei since. So I just, I, I love it there. Um, yeah. But, it's just, it's a cool spot. It's beautiful. But, the street food is is almost unrivaled. I think oh. if you, if I say to anyone going to Taiwan, just spend a week eating food because there's a different yes. market every day. Yep. Yeah. Did you have stinky tofu? Yep. Tried some of that. You know, <laughs> your face does not tell me you enjoyed that experience. There is there's a few uh, interesting things I tried. Yeah, that, that was okay. Yeah. Uh, I yeah. haven't tried it yet, and that mostly stems from like an experience trying durian that just did not mix well with me. And I felt bad mm -hmm. for a long time. And like, I was determined to be a person who likes durian. So it was one of those things where I tried it and initially, like instinct was like, this is just not going to mix well with me. But I kept going because I was like, no, I'm going <laughs> to make myself like this. <laughs> and it didn't work. And I didn't feel great for like eight hours. <laughs> and that's just, you know, cool. how it goes. But I, I wasn't really willing to sacrifice eating all the food at uh taiwanese night market just to have stinky toe yeah maybe i will another time <laughs> i mean i know some people try. love it i've just got to try it yeah yeah i guess you've got to try it yeah okay <laughs> and i've got one more question here what's coming up for 2024 travel wise and then go into 2025 what's on your list yeah. or plans so 2024 kuwait and then maybe istanbul or dubai or bahrain before that and then i think that's it I have a kid now, so it's a little slower pace. We'd already, I'd already done a lot of travel this year, so I can't complain. Next year, Buenos Aires and Antarctica uh, as part of a trip. Yeah. Can't put that one on points, <laughs> can you? Yeah, no, no you <laughs> cannot. But I did find a really good deal for the cruise over, so that was good. Okay. Uh, I'm right. still a deal hunter, but yeah, it's, uh, I'm so excited about that. Never been. <laughs> it looks just, incredible. Looks incredible. I, I yeah, it's hard. It's hard to put into words. It's just like it's. I don't know. I think when I started traveling, it wasn't even something in my mind that I thought, "Oh yes, I'll do that." Mm. So now I'm still like giddy, like a small child, <laughs> like getting a birthday <laughs> gift or something. Where I'm like, "I'm going." So, yeah, I'm really excited about that. It's one of those places that you just got to accept. You have got to spend some money, and I think that's mm -hmm. easier in a way, Absolutely. especially for you. Right? If you're if you're constantly finding deals or points, it must it must be quite nice sometimes. Do you know what Antarctica? I found a good deal, but you just got to spend the money because what whatever choice yeah. have you got? Yeah. Must and I mean, I feel good about it because like I booked a business class ticket to Buenos Aires that ended up being like, I don't know, $750 round trip, which is significantly wow. cheaper than usual. Um, I have to go to Denver to get the flight. Speaking of being willing to go anywhere for a mm -hmm. good flight deal, but I'm going to use points to get out there. And so, you know, in the grand scheme, like people spend thousands of dollars to get there and they spend thousands of dollars. Like, it's just like, I'd, I'm, I'm, I'm severely reducing the cost that I have to pay for this, but I've, I'm very fortunate that I booked a great cruise line, great experience on board. A friend of mine's already done it. So yeah. um, I'm, I'm very much looking forward to it yeah, and I'm taking a friend, which will make it even better. So that's pretty exciting. Yeah. Pretty jealous of that. I just don't think it's on my radar <laughs> for another couple of years. So yeah. Maybe just keep out for, look out for deals actually. Maybe just keep an eye out. I'll send you a photo maybe while like I'm on the <laughs> ship and be like, yeah. I don't know, maybe you should be doing this sooner rather <laughs> yeah. than later. <laughs> yeah, thanks. I appreciate that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. On that bombshell, we're going to finish with some quick fire travel questions. These are some of your favorite things you've seen uh, worldwide. Normally like favorite foods and stuff. So, but I'm actually going to kick off with. It's travel question time. Three favorite countries that you travel to. Yeah. Taiwan's obviously there. I really like Germany, especially in the Black Forest. Uh, spent two weeks driving around there uh, nice. a while back. I do the last one. I think so much of my travel now is with, like, I like seeing friends who I've met along the way. So, like, Australia is a ton of fun for me because I get to go see one of my best friends. So that's just, like, yeah, it's just kind of a personal thing versus, yeah, something completely out there. <laughs> okay. 
And excluding points, because that's the main part of the conversation, if tomorrow you can go to anywhere, three countries for a trip, three countries. which three countries are going to go to? That's a great question. I'd like to go back to South Africa. There's so much more that I haven't seen there. I want to go to the Monaco Grand Prix because I like Formula One racing. Oh, and I just same. want to see the yeah. spectacle of it all. Like, I know it's not the best race on the calendar per se, but just like, I feel like <laughs> it's just got to be a wild experience just to observe. And then... I mean, Antarctica is already there, but that's cheating. Oh, I want to go spend time in Patagonia. That's, I'd really like okay. to do that. Lovely. So. Yeah, yeah. Okay, what's three of your favorite cuisines worldwide? Well, Taiwanese, which is like a nice meshing of uh, Japanese and various parts of China. Yeah. Um, so that's fun. What other ones do I really like? This is probably one that most people don't think of, but in the Balkans, there's Chivapi. I don't know. Chivap Chichi or Chivap. Yeah. I don't know. I have saw it mentioned in different languages, depending on the country. Really enjoyed that. Uh, if you like, if you eat meat, that's a good one. What else? Turkish. I really like food in Turkey. Yeah. Absolutely amazing food. Big one. Um, yeah. Okay. And if you could sit somewhere for an afternoon with a cup of coffee and watch the world go by, where are you going to sit? I don't really drink coffee. Uh, I'll that's have a wine. Beer. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah whatever. That's yeah. wine. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> where would I sit? The Black Forest was great. It's. I really love mountains. Um, okay. But I think if I would think I would probably try to find somewhere in the like Switzerland, Italy area with like a mountain and water. I like mountain and lakes yeah. together. So that's that's where I think I'd be chilling. Unrivaled with that. Okay. Are you a sunrise or a sunset person? I'm not really a morning person. However, I love sunrise flights. <laughs> sunrise. I, gotta sa- I gotta like suffer for the view. <laughs> yeah, it's worth it in the end, isn't it? I think you, you hate getting up, but it's worth it in the end. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, if you're going <laughs> to. Go to a country tomorrow and you're looking to look at a landmark for the first time. So is there a special landmark, could be nature or man-made, where you're going to check out? That's a great question. I actually don't know. I mean, I love tall buildings, but I've seen a lot of them. However, I would love to see the new one in Kuala Lumpur. It's one of the tallest buildings in the world. Oh, it's a new one? Oh, yeah. Wow. I can't remember the name of it now, but it is. I drove by, like, I was in a taxi kind of at a distance when it was being built. <laughs> But I would like to go back and go to the top. Um, I've been there a few times, but yeah, I guess that's before. It's new because they have the yeah. Petronas Towers. Yeah, Petronas um, and... and I've done that. Uh, and KL like, Tower. The... Yeah. Yeah. Then there's, I've been to the Burj Khalifa in Dubai, Taipei yep. 101 yep. in Taiwan. That's one of my favorites because they have the damper up top and you can like see yeah, how great. it works if there's an earthquake. Yeah. And now they let you go even higher and they strap you onto something and like let you stand outside. <laughs> okay. Definitely did that the moment okay. that was open. <laughs> Wow. I've got pictures of me just like grinning like an <laughs> idiot, standing outside on top of that building. Okay. Um, what else have I got? If you could go and live somewhere tomorrow for one year, where do you think you'd live? Hmm. Really would like to live in Spain slash Portugal. Would split time. I think that would be fun. Uh, but we'll go with Spain since it's, you said one. Um, yeah. Spain. Great wine. Great food. Dream seems like a, just a beautiful place. Mm. Uh, and if you want, you can go to like the Canary Islands during that year because technically it's still Spain. Internal. It's yeah. cheating. <laughs> yeah. Cheating. Yeah. Well, I went to Madeira in December, oh, so yeah. that's internal from Lisbon, right? But a yep. four hour flight, whether it's all three hours. Yep. <laughs> okay. And has there been a place you traveled to that you didn't like? I don't know if I would say didn't. I don't think there's anywhere I've been where I'm like, oh, this is awful. There's probably places where I'm like, ah, eh, just that's enough. Okay. Moldova, Moldova for me. It's okay. the least touristed country in Europe, as I learned. It just didn't, I don't know, just didn't fully connect with me. I did, I did, it was worth going. I popped into, a, what's it called? Transnistria or Pridnistria, oh, yeah. depending like on Russian which, proxy places. Which, it, it's, uh, they were the only part of Moldova that voted to stay with the Soviet Union back in like the early 90s. Mm. Um, yeah. But it was just, so it was just kind of interesting to go, again, it's very different. Yeah, uh, than anything. It's like than anything I'm around. So it was just kind of like fun to pop in for a day, get a tour, wander around, and you know, back out. After. There's a Harry Potter statue there, which I think is hilarious. What? Everybody loves Harry Potter. Apparently, it doesn't matter where you go in the world. There's gonna be a Harry Potter statue. International language Harry Potter. Yeah, and uh, I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. And talk um, the money in your experience of traveling. What country has had the best budget? So where does a dollar go to furthest do you think i mean i'm sure i could just like 
look it up and there's it's like math but i think thailand works really well if you're trying to like stretch it and so i'll add my twist because i like to add like a nice experience mm -hmm. bangkok specifically has like luxury hotels at a price point that will stun you like hotels that you go to other cities and they're like oh that'll be two thousand dollars a night and then in bangkok it's like 200 250 300 like it's it's a very different i mean it's i don't know how but it's just wild i think yeah. that's and i think that's fun and i think I always talk about luxury for less and just maybe you're not budgeting for, you know, the four seasons in London, <laughs> um, <laughs> which is a beautiful property in of itself. Uh, but if it's like $400, not $1,500, like, yeah, it's still a splurge for a lot of people, but mm -hmm. it's an opportunity to try something. Yeah. Um, and maybe one day you get to the point where you're just booking the one in London or Paris and it doesn't even matter to you. But this is like a city where you can kind of go get a taste of something and try something different. Yeah, that's a quite an interesting point because if you have a budget and you just want to experience what it could be like, obviously, yeah. if you're gonna have, I don't know, you got you got a week and you got three thousand dollars. Is making this up? If you're gonna spend that in Australia, you're gonna get nowhere. But if you go to somewhere like <laughs> I don't know the Philippines or yeah. Thailand and just kind of live it there, you're gonna experience what it could yeah. be like in the future. Right? It's a good it's a good sight into the future about well, it's... if I work towards. Maybe I want to go to US and do that or Canada. I know what it's going to be like in it's, terms of saying those hotels or doing you know, those experiences, aren't they? Yeah. And so, I mean, I mentioned I do luxury hotel bookings for clients. Like part of that is like I'm an agent with partnerships with different hotel programs. So we mm. add benefits to these days. So like if before you commit to kind of really spending a ton of money on luxury hotels, I think it's a great idea to kind of just figure out what it is you want in a mm. hotel. Yeah. Um, and maybe you decide that like, you don't know, want it and Holiday Inn is what you want. That's great. Like, but if, if this gives you the opportunity to kind of see what's out there, see what's available, let you make that kind of informed decision and, and you do it in a way where it's not so cost prohibitive. I think that's just like a great way to kind of find what your travel style is mm -hmm. uh, or what you want your travel style to be. It's, mm -hmm. I think, and I definitely viewed this viewed it this way for a long time is kind of like luxury hotels are for other people it's not for me it's for other people <laughs> and yeah. Yeah. and it just seemed like it must be people who have so much money they don't even think about it mm. it was only as i learned more about this and you know started doing it myself where it's like oh it's again it's prioritizing and so yeah am i in a position where i can just like book the suite at every hotel every time i stay somewhere? no but i take the opportunities where i'm like hey this is like an experience I'd like to have. It's within the budget. Like I would like to try this again. It's just where you are in life, but mm -hmm. that's one. I do like Bangkok for that. And Thailand broadly for food, obviously. Yeah. It's just probably, a great spot. I um, think it is my favorite country in the world for food. Definitely. Yeah. I kind I of feel like you're, you're in, not alone. They're in India. They're, they're the two. Okay. I... You know, I've never been to India. I've been to Sri Lanka, but I've never been to India. Oh, okay. It's <laughs> like a taster. Uh... I like Sri Lanka. It was good. I was there when the world shut down in 2020 and had to like, scramble oh, to get a flight get out home. yeah, yeah. <laughs> they were like i think they had said they were going to close airspace in two days and my friends and i were like we should leave yeah. <laughs> but it was oh, a beautiful man. place and the hotel was super friendly trying to help us so yeah i, I had this conversation with a friend who's actually in where is he pakistan right now and we talk yeah. about food and the question with food is how long can you go with a local cuisine without needing to go to western food or a different cult oh, cuisine right so I think for me, the only two, like you've got to be honest with yourself here, the only two countries I think for me that is, that I've been to is Thailand and India. I think I could eat that all the time. As yeah. even in Italy, I still get a bit annoyed. That's controversial. This amazing pasta. Again, <laughs> I guess, I mean, if you're in Italy, you just go to the northern part and it becomes more like Austrian. Like you yeah. can get this name yeah. kind of schnitzel thing once you hit yeah, yeah. Milan. Yeah, <laughs> but I guess that's probably too, too similar to my own cuisine, but. So like India yeah. is street food or if you're eating locally, it's just a different ball game. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. For, I think for me, it's Taiwan. I mean, I just, I had so much food there, different types. Mm. I mean, turkey rice, it's so, so turkey rice, chicken rice, whatever. It's just like white rice, <laughs> meat. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah. it seems so simple. And it was like a grandmother made, truly. It was just like a grandmother <laughs> made it. And I remember, think, I remember thinking like, this can't be like that great. And I took a bite of it and I was like, wow, man, that's just like, that's comfort food. I get it. Like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just... It's better than, I mean, I make rice and turkey and chicken and it doesn't taste the same. the same. I don't know what you did, but like, <laughs> could you just make my food? <laughs> That's what you pay for, right? Yeah. Oh, man. Okay. Uh, last question for the podcast episode is, in a few sentences, if someone's listening right now, maybe even especially Americans, 
who are maybe a bit nervous traveling abroad and getting experienced um, in terms of like a different culture, what few sentences can you give to advise them to maybe take that leap and get out there? Oh man, just go. I feel I feel like I should have something more serious and thought out. But my laid off the first trip I used points on was a solo trip from the U.S. to the Middle East to Australia to Singapore and Malaysia and then back. And that was the first time I'd ever traveled with points or solo. So I'm clearly somebody who's just like, oh, we'll just see what happens. I know that's not necessarily the safest way for everybody to do that. I think finding a buddy to just go with you is a great way to do it, though. Mm -hmm. I think you're safer, but also you just feel more comfortable having somebody there. But if you're willing to, like, and you feel like you can do it safely, like, go travel solo, like, that's a fun experience. Mm. I learned solo travel is not, like, my thing. I'll do it. I like it enough, but it's not, like, my obsession the way it is for some people. But I think, yeah, I think trying that, once is a good idea but yeah i think it's it's about learning where to push yourself and where to say okay i'm not comfortable with this find a country where you feel comfortable going solo doesn't have to be anything crazy like i just go, go to the uk i don't care yeah like go to London, ireland whatever ireland yeah, yeah i mean you know whatever that's fine go somewhere that makes you comfortable to start i often tell people who are like going to asia feels so far away and so i'm like listen just go to singapore first like You'll see a lot of English. You'll hear a lot of English. Yeah. Shopping it's a malls. Good entry. Plenty of shopping malls, but you have hawker centers. So you get like street food, but it's very organized yeah. and it's good. It's good food. And you can just get yourself over there, mm. but you can ease in. <laughs> and so you can like, you can hear your language first. Not that you won't hear English again, but it's just, it makes it easy. And then from there, you just go like Thailand and like everybody's so friendly in Thailand. And, you know, it's another step. And I think it's, it's more just kind of like, progressing through things mm -hmm. uh, and and like in like anything the better infrastructure a country has the easier it'll be for you yeah so just knowing that you're going somewhere where things are like kind of set up to operate well and they're in a position to do so it's just easier uh so there and then as you go you start to kind of learn things and then you can navigate things that aren't as easy egypt mm -hmm. i don't think is easy to travel I think having a guide there is really great. It just helps make everything easier. So like, great, learn that too. Figure out where you're going to want help. I don't know. This is not a short answer. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's a, yeah. But but in the end, I'm just like, just go. It's kind of how I look at it. It's the best um, advice. Yeah. I think so many people say it. So um, now yeah, cause, I have cause... a question for you. Is there, a, and maybe you've answered this many times. I'm sorry, but I, I haven't heard it yet. Is there a place on the planet that you're just like, oh, this is the one spot like I'd really like to go? As in I've been to before or what I think no, no, like, that you haven't been where you think like, I just really want to go see this. I've always had an obsession with paradise in, in quotation marks there and my obsession with what that looks like. And I think what that looks like is something like French Polynesia, Bora Bora or Fair enough. Uh, anywhere on those islands. I just have an obsession to go and see it. So I think yeah. I've been to quite a few countries, but I think that's the one where they, do you know what, tomorrow, like I asked you the question tomorrow, where are you going to go? If there's no rules tomorrow, I'm off to, I'm off to French Polynesia. So, okay. You know, that's, that's the a place. Question for. Is it paradise? That's the question though, isn't it? Is it as good as I think I mean, it's going to be? I, I know many people who would say it is. That's a really good one. I think for me, it's Socotra. And um, it's so difficult. Yes, yeah, I just think it'd be so, and I've seen the trees have this like certain look and it's just like, I don't know. It's just, I think there's so many, pla and I'm sure there are lots of places like that. A friend of mine mentioned it and I was like, no, I really want to go. Uh, yeah, a friend of mine does a tour there. Yeah, he does oh, tour guys, cool. tour stuff there. Yeah, he, that's um, excellent. He loves it. But that's just the, I don't know. I think there's a lot of places like that that I haven't even heard of or thought of. And I want to just kind of like go see, just to see. Um, and just kind of experience that that is just different yeah, yeah sort of like out there a little bit not really talked about that, that much there's loads yeah, of places like that for me i yeah. think there's yeah. i mean for someone who's been like making content on instagram admittedly much more educational than the kind of like typical stuff but i don't know there's so many places back when instagram had photos and everybody would go to the same place and take the same photo and mm -hmm. i and i just nothing about that appealed to me it just seemed like people were just going to say they went to the place. And I was, I don't know. It just seems like there's so, there's got to be more than just the like 100 places that everybody takes a photo of. And so, yeah, and I know I, there, there is, it's just like, I think the hard part is finding them and it's 
it's like, it's gotta be word of mouth almost. Somebody does something and yeah, shares yeah. it. And I kind of like that idea. So a friend told me about Socotra and now I'm into it. And yeah, it's on my list. I think I'll, I'll give you another answer because I think Fr French Polynesia Borbora has always been talked about. I think there's photos everywhere. I know. I'll tell you somewhere who kind of follows the same line. So I think it might be paradise, which is a bit unknown, is the Andaman Islands. Uh, okay. Technically the west of Thailand, but it, they are Indian. Now, okay. oh, yeah. They are, well, they look incredible and they're super, yeah. apparently they're super cheap. And it's like Thailand back in the 90s in terms of no one there pristine beaches but no one goes but no one in india goes like in terms of like locals oh, right even though it's internal yeah yeah so andaman islands is probably the the unusual shout for me if you're oh i like if you're that. going to Kotra, yeah yeah i like that okay good stuff there you go yeah spencer what a great chat yeah it's been amazing Jeez, thanks it's been for pleasure. Pleasure. yeah that's a lot about points and what you're up to and also travel uh, in terms of what you've done previously but also what's coming up and yeah it's been a super engaging chat yeah, it's great chatting with you. Cheers, thank you. Thanks for tuning in to the podcast episode today. If you've been inspired by today's chat and want to book some travel, if you head to the show notes, you'll see some affiliate links below which help support this podcast. You'll find Skyscanner to book your flight. You'll find Booking.com to book that accommodation. Want to stay in a super cool hostel? You'll see Hostel World down there too. You'll find Revolut to get your travel card sorted. Click the Gig Sky link to get your eSIM ready for your trip. And more importantly, you'll find Safety Wing Insurance to get that travel insurance for your trip. There are many more to check out, so when you click that link and book your product, a small commission goes towards me and the Wigginet Travel Podcast. Thank you in advance and enjoy your travels.